electrical system it does not ossify or it does not uh, become calcified before 40 40 days of the gestation rule of thumb you know that any anesthetic agent which traverses the blood brain barrier will also pass through the placental barrier you know what are indications for cesarean section when the normal delivery does not occur or the manual pro procedures don't work we go for cesarean section however <clears throat> the proposal is that if you think that cesarean is necessary don't delay it otherwise it will maybe you know not beneficial for the mother as well as for the young ones so don't delay the cesarean section if it is if you think it is necessary as far as diagnosis is concerned physical examination that you can palpate in the dogs very easily then you have the radiography the radiography or the ultrasound now these are three very good you know diagnostic procedures as far as radiography is concerned you know the skeletal system it does not ossify or it does not uh, become calcified before 40, 40 days of the gestation. So before 40 days of gestation, radiography may not help. But the ultrasound will help because ultrasound will tell you about the images or the echoes will come back from, from the different you know, amniotic sacs along with the, the, you may also find the fetus inside. But after 45 days, <clears throat> then radiography is equally good as well as, uh, and the ultrasound is equally good so in the radiography you know you can you can check different you know you can also check the numbers of the fetus you may count the skulls or the spinal columns you can see two pups in this one <coughs> this one you know maybe seven eight or you know seven or eight pups as far as the ultrasound is concerned you know ultrasound that, that will tell you a very clear picture the amniotic sac, the fluid, and the fetus inside. You know. Even in the initial stages, maybe you know, 15 days, 20 days, sometimes 25 days, uh, you know, that that is also uh, uh, confirmed by the ultrasound examination. You can see it over here: the amniotic sac, they are the fluids, and this you know small specks over here, which are indicating that they are the fetuses inside. You know. Now the most important thing is the anesthetic protocols for the anesthesia because we want the safety of the mother as well as safety of the fetus or the young ones. We don't want that any one of them should die. So as a rule of thumb, you know that any anesthetic agent which traverses the blood brain barrier will also pass through the placental barrier. So if we use very, you know, you know potent anesthetic drugs they may damage the young ones there by you know they will cross the placental barrier they will depress the you know young ones very badly uh, there is a danger of death also so what we normally do is <coughs> we uh, we use very small doses of the anest uh, you know pre anesthetics and then we normally put them on the uh, on the in inhalation or gas anesthesia machine or gas anesthetics you know. However, if you don't have the gas anesthesia machines with you, <clears throat> then it is always better to underdose the anesthetics, maybe intravenous anesthetics or the intramuscular anesthetics as well sometimes, along with some local infiltration, you know, in the subcutaneous tissue, so that you know we can perform the cesarean section uh, without any danger to the dam and the fetus. So some protocols which are mainly used or which are in common use, uh, one is the induction with diazepam 25 milligrams per kg and propofol at the dose rate of 2 to 4 milligrams per kg IV and then you can maintain it on the anesthesia or isoflurane or sevoflurane. Protocol 2 again, diazepam is a good drug, 0 0.25 milligrams per kg along with oxymorphone. 0.05 to 0.1 milligrams per kg 
and then you again maintain it on isoflurane or the sevoflurane. And protocol three is diazepam in the same dose rate with ketamine five to ten milligrams per kg. And again, you just shift it on the gas and SCCI. So these are the three protocols which are in common use, and they are quite safe also. The surgical technique of the cesarean section, you know, this is cordial midline laparotomy, that is from umbilicus up to the up to the pelvic brim. Now here, don't try to give the small incision because you have to exteriorize the fetus. You know, there may be big big fetus because they are dystrophia, they are full term fetus. So we don't try to pull them up, pull them out forcefully. We give a larger incision so that we can lift them up properly to exteriorize them from the abdominal cavity. Okay, we don't pull the gravid uterus. We just lift the gravid uterus out of the abdominal cavity. Okay, so exteriorize the gravid uterus, the horns. The incision is always given on the body of the uterus, and then we squeeze the, you know, fetuses. Towards that incision from both the horns, and delivery is completed. However, this is not a hard and fast rule. You know, if you think that uh, you know you cannot squeeze all the fetuses, you cannot deliver all the fetuses through uh, that single incision on the uterine body, then you can give even two incisions, one on each horn, and then you will close them up, right? But normally, what we do is we give only one incision on the ventral aspect of the you know uterine body. Because the animal is in dorsal recumbency, it's the ventral surface of the uterus which is facing us. So we give incision on the ventral side, and then you take them out. No need to again emphasize that laparotomy pads are necessary so that anything which spills out from the you know uterus that should not go into the peritoneal cavity. <clears throat> so then you can incise the uterine body without lacerating neonate. You have to be very careful that you don't give very deep incision; otherwise, you can cut on the skin of the fetus also. Okay. So then you extend the incision with the maximum scissors. Then you empty each horn by gentle squeezing, rupture the amniotic sac, and then you will clamp the umbilical cord. After umbilical clamping, you cut the umbilical cord, give the you know fetus to the you know team. Which is working with you to you know clean it up. Because surgeons cannot do you know that thing. Your know, surgeon has to only deliver the fetus and will give it to the other team who will clean the mouth and the you know chest. And if you want to you know squeeze it, you know or you 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 want to you know, hang it upside down for <laughs> welfare of the fetus, right? So empty each arm like that. Rupture and neonatal sac that I have told you already. So this is how you give the incision, just you know, cordial to the you no know, uterine horns on the body of the uterus, and then you deliver it, you know, all the fetuses through the same incision. It is easy, you know, not very difficult. After that, you no, know, normally the placenta it will come out along with the fetus. In the in the dogs. It is not very difficult. However, you have to decide according to the situation. That is, don't tear away the placenta from the uterine body; otherwise, it will bleed. So, if the placenta comes out easily, it is okay. Otherwise, leave it inside; it will come out through the normal passage. Then, if contamination has occurred, you should always lavage the abdominal cavity if the contamination is there. If you think that contamination has occurred, otherwise, there is no need. Sometimes do you will see some cases. Some owners will ask you that, you no, know, they need the pups now, but they don't need any further breeding from that dog. So in that case, you know, uh, you will do first the cesarean section, and then you can do the ovarian section. It is always advisable to do the cesarean or to deliver the pups first, and then do the ovarian section. Don't don't do that. You know, you do the ovarian section first, and you know. Take it out, then you deliver the pups. By that time, the pups may be dead because you have cut on, cut down the blood supply, oxygen supply to the pups. So the pups will die, or the kittens will die, right? So it is always better to do the cesarean section first, and then you uh, do the ovarian section. 
However, if you can, you know, if you can repeat that process, you know, various techniques within 30 to 60 seconds, and after that you <laughs> deliver the pups, it is up to you. But I don't think you can do it in one minute, you know, because we have to do it patiently, right? So it is always better to do the cesarean second first and then do the ovariostectomy. So this was about the cesarean section. We normally close the sutures, I know close the uh, uterine incision with the uteret sutures. You know I have already told you how we do the uteret sutures. That is you take a bite from a distance of the edge of the incision, go obliquely and come out near the edge of the incision. And on the other side, you go about half the way back, as you can see it over here, and then come half the way forward here. So like this, you know, the <clears throat> tissues will also be inverted, and uh, the suture material will also not be visible. Because if the suture material is exposed, it has greater chances for adhesions with the surrounding tissues. We don't want the adhesions of the uterus, because it affects the fertility rate for the future. You know. So these sutures, you know, they are quite good sutures. As you can see it over here, these are dry. This is the, of course, this is the you know uterus of a camel. So you can see that you know the needle is inserted a little bit away from the edge of the incision. Then you come out over here near the edge of the incision. On the other hand, on the other side, if you exit it over here, do enter it over here and then exit over here, half the way back and half the way forward. You know, okay. So like that you can you know you can very easily close and you can see how it is closed and you there is no also visible suture material. The su there only the you will see the line only, the suture material is not visible, it's not exposed. And this is the end result of that, you know. You can see it is beautifully closed and you can not see the suture material over here. So these sutures are quite good. Otherwise, you can also use the Lambert sutures cushion sutures as you like, but these sutures are better as far as the closure is concerned.